I'm Janet and I am with you and looking forward to this session with you. So we're going to be focusing on reading skills. So reading skills falls under reading and viewing. And it's really important that you practice your reading skills. Now we're going to be practicing with a lot of adverts. Then we're going to do some, some questions around grammar and things like that. And then I want to come back if I've got time to reading skills. But it's really important that you think about your reading skills, that you develop them very consciously. Because as adults, we kind of do it automatically. But to become that automatic reader, you need to do the practicing. So let's be very conscious of what we're doing. And you must always look at your process of reading. This is in your CAPS document. And they suggest that you're always looking at a kind of pre-reading. What am I doing before I read? And then a during reading. And that for me is so important. We need to focus on this. And then a post reading, which is usually your questions in your test or exam. Remember, pre is a prefix. And it means before. And remember, post is a prefix and it means after. But I think what we don't pay enough attention to is what is going on during reading. So I'm going to try to focus on that as much as I can this evening. Right, so we start with this. This is a question sent by. I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe Mbali will tell me. But this is a question sent by, by one of you, you guys. So you're in your, your advert. So as part of your pre-reading, you say to yourself, have I revised everything I know about advertising? So what you're doing is you are getting your mind going. So you've got all these little electrical pathways in the brain and you're setting them off to think about advertising. I would really recommend that you go back and you study your AIDA principle. So you look at how does the advertiser get my attention? Once he's got my attention, how does he keep my interest? What desires is she appealing to? What action does she want me to take? So, ah, this. I think is the name of the student. It's not on my piece of paper, but I think it's, it's on this. So lovely. Briani, if I'm talking to you, Jeremiah. Okay, this is what we're doing. So we've activated our neural pathways. Advertising, we've remembered what we've learned in the past. So we look at the picture. And we see it says that it's corn. So we're looking at millies in a tin. Whole kernel, so we know what we're looking at. And it's kind of wrapped in what looks like the, you know, the, the papery leaf of the mealy. So it makes it look as if the tin is actually growing in the plant. So you say, okay, it's, it's quite clever. This is how the advertiser is getting my attention. Now, you need to say to yourself, who is the target audience? Now, it isn't somebody who hates corn, right? My eldest son, I put corn into the food. He goes, ah, ma, why you got that? It's not for him. So often when students are answering questions, they say, oh, no, this wouldn't appeal to me because I don't like corn. Then you're not the target audience. So if you saw it in a magazine, you'd say, oh, corn, and you turn the page. And maybe this brand in the next page has something about asparagus or tomatoes. And you go, oh, yeah, now, now you're talking. Do you understand? You've got to imagine you are the target audience. So when you look at this, you go, oh, corn, I love corn. Good heavens, how are they presenting it? Oh, look at that. 
they're making it seem so natural, as if it's growing there. Oh, isn't that clever? Right, they've got your attention. Super dupes, now what? Okay, now you read down, because what do we, oh, let me just get a nice, can I get a nice bright color here? We've got the attention, now we're looking at the interest. How, uh, let's see how my interest is kept. It's almost as if Mother Nature planned it this way. Planned what? Planned producing corn. And I've got the right color for my corn. And this, of course, it's white mealies. Right, planned it this way. So Mother Nature, if she could have, would have produced this tin with this corn instead of, I don't know, your, your milli cob like that. Okay, so now what are we doing? We are engaging with the text. This is our during reading. So we've done the pre-reading. Now it's the during reading. And we're reacting to the text. Okay, Mother Nature. Ah, that is such a cliche. Now later on, there's a question about stock phrases. I can't remember who asked it, but please won't you make a note that Mother Nature is a stock phrase. Okay, it's been used so often, we don't even think about it anymore. All right, but if Mother Nature is personified as planning producing corn, it's almost. Okay, so a slightly humorous, but, but serious. They, they're saying their, their corn is remarkable. At Rhodes, we believe that perfection takes time. So now engage with the text. So you say to yourself, look at the we believe. Perfection takes time. Perfection, look at that word. Takes time. You don't rush nature. And superior taste only comes naturally. Oh yeah, look what they're doing. There's Mother Nature and there's my, my Millie. So you can see what they're doing. They're maintaining your interest. Although you're going to be eating something out of a tin, they have waited for that plant to grow. And now the taste is amazing. So it's all of that that's going on. That's why we work, we work, notice they work in harmony, in harmony with Mother Nature. They are not ripping these plants out of the ground. They're in harmony. And we love this idea. It makes us think of something so peaceful and organic and they are working with the environment they're not working against the environment wow okay to bring you premium quality corn first we hand pick the finest local farm look at all of this it's all working together let's start with local what do we say local is lekker another stock phrase so you are supporting South Africa. You're possibly supporting small producers to give those producers a chance. Finest, obviously they're the best, and they hand pick those farms where the top cobs are chosen. So there's like, it's like a two-step thing. First of all, they pick the farm. They don't just allow any farm to produce the corn and once they've picked the farm only the absolutely best cobs right vocab so this is a cob right it's a corn cob so only the best cobs so look at this and only look at the only once we're completely satisfied with our selection are our corn kernels prepared to perfection. They're prepared for us and they're packed with absolute care. So they're almost suggesting that they go out there and they check each cob and they are making sure that it's, it's picked in the right way and prepared in the right way and put into the tin in the right way. And notice the we, 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 our corn. They're invested in this corn. They care about this corn, right? It's the way we've brought you, so suddenly I've arrived, the best that nature, there it is again, has to offer from soil 
to shelf. Oh yes, look at the alliteration. I always joke with my students and say you can watch TV and if your parents say, what are you doing? I'm practicing my figurative language. Okay, because adverts and various other things on TV, that's going to have figurative language. So here we've got the alliteration. So from soil to shelf, suggesting right from its origin in the earth to the shelf in the supermarket where you buy it. And they make sure that it comes from that origin to the supermarket and it's cared about. Look at this absolute care every step of the way. And moreover, they've been doing it for over a hundred years. And it's the way we'll continue to do so naturally. Oh yeah, okay, now we got a pun. Okay, so naturally means, of course, it is the usual way we do something. It's normal for us and natural as in from nature itself. Okay, so the word nature has popped up all the time. So, right, attention was grabbed with that picture and then the headline. And now we're reading it through because we're interested. We're looking at corn. We want to see what they've got to say. We quite like that picture. Come on, it was quite clever. So let's, let's read what they've got to say. We're the target audience, we're prepared to read it. Right, you don't say it's too long and I couldn't be prepared to read it. Okay, now, now we come to our post reading and now we've got our question. Okay, so before we look at the question, just remember that active reading is not just letting the text go past you. So you go, let me look at the questions. Active reading is engaging with the text as you go. All right? Now, in an exam or a test, I would suggest that you read the questions first. But I'm going to just go through them one at a time. All right, what product is being advertised? Now, be careful. You've got to say the product, not the brand. So the product is corn, or you could say millies in a can. All right. To whom would this advertisement appeal? Well, it's anybody who likes corn. So if you like corn, you would be, you know, you want to eat it, you enjoy it. But it could be anybody who's going to cook with that corn. So you could say it might appeal to my mother or mothers. Try to be specific. So, so mothers who are planning a meal and they want something that they have been assured is natural, so they would like that. Um, fathers who cook. Oh, that was quite sexist, wasn't it? Fathers who cook. Parents who cook. Caregivers who cook. Chefs who cook. So anybody who's interested in using corn in a recipe. Right, now we come to slogan. Okay, so let's just go back. Where is the slogan? Well, I've almost written all over it. It's down here. It's from nature to you. So that fits in with this. Do you see the link? So from nature the origin in the soil, to the supermarket, and you buying that tin. So that's the slogan. Do you know what a slogan is? Yes? So that short sort of catchy phrase, right. Now what technique does the advertiser use to draw the reader's attention to the headline? Okay. So... What do you notice? Well, it's big, or at least it's bigger than, than this, the, the text over there. It has Mother Nature in bold. I think that's fine. How many marks was this out of? It says technique. You just need one of them. Right, refer to the following words. Ah, well, we've already looked at this. 
So because we were engaging with the text while we were reading and we weren't just kind of letting it pass in front of our eyes, we've already got an idea. So what do these words suggest about this particular brand? All right, so we talked about the we and we said that the we and the our and the us suggest that this company is deeply and sincerely involved in the process of finding the corn and then preparing it and putting it in the tins. It suggests that they are sincere in their interest in their product and therefore, you know, they're sincerely interested in you as the, as the target audience, as the, the people who are going to buy it. All right, then, handpick the finest local farms. Well, we talked about this. We said that this suggests the handpicked is that they are very selective. They do not just choose any old farm. And, um, and then if you've got um, finest local farms, so we talked about the fact that they are um, that they are supporting local, so they support um, South African producers. So they are supporting South Africa. It's a South African brand, um, and then finest. So we had to look at finest, and finest gave us the best quality farms. So therefore, the product. So what do these words suggest about the brand? Let's try to sum all of that up. What would we say? That the brand is concerned about the product and the consumer. That they are, I don't want to say picky or fussy, and I don't want to use selective again, but that they are determined to produce only the best. It's for two marks, so try to make two separate points. So how concerned they are and how determined they are that everything about this product will be the best. Okay, now in FAL, you often get a language question like this one tucked into your advert or your cartoon. You generally do not get this in home language. So the language questions in home language tend to be kept only for question five, whereas in FAL, you will find them coming right through the whole paper. But everybody needs to know what this punctuation mark is. So what is it? It is a hyphen. Please learn the difference between the hyphen and the dash. How does the advertiser inform the reader that this product is a well-established brand? Oh, yeah, well, we know that because we picked it up while we were reading here. They say that this brand has been operating for over 100 years. So that's how they suggest that they are reliable. All right, you don't need to say reliable, just the 100 years. And then discuss whether the advertiser succeeds in conveying the message through the visual. So the visual, we said, had to do with nature. And then the message is that their product is natural and is the best of nature. So succeeds in conveying the message through the visual. So you'd say something like the fact that the tin is held as if it were part of nature. So it supports the idea of harmony, that it is part of nature. So, yeah. Now, should you disagree? I think, I think for this kind of discussion for two marks, you, it's actually easier to start with the yes part of it because there's plenty to say for the two marks. And then you, if you were for three marks, you might say, However, we're perfectly well aware that that's a tin and, and that it does, it's not as natural as they are suggesting. They say it's been prepared for you. So there's been some kind of cooking and preserving going on. 
to get it into the tin. So, but I would, I would start with, yes, the, the picture and the message go absolutely together. That word nature, we saw how many times it was used. And the picture suggests that it's in harmony with nature. It's part of nature. It's as if it were naturally growing on the plant. Okay. So I hope that that's helped. But again, um, for Yanni, what were the problems? What are the difficulties? Is it that you're rushing the question? Should you take it more slowly? Are you practicing your during reading skills, engaging with the text? You know, I don't quite know what's going on. 